Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one online platform for creatives. So a while ago I did a video talking about uh, composition techniques, wanted to follow it up with a part two, but figured I'd switch it up a little bit and uh, talk about working with natural light, just because it's what the majority of my work is, just photographing the landscape and the environment. I've been doing that for like the last 15 years. So these are just a few things that I've picked up and learned over those years. Uh, we're gonna talk about five different points today. As always, these are just things that work for me. These aren't rules, so kind of take what you will from this. Uh, anyways, let's jump on the computer. We'll take a look at the first uh, point and jump into some images. The first point we're gonna talk about is choosing the right light. You know, when you're looking into uh, landscape photography or working in the outdoors, working with natural light, one of the things you always hear is golden hour. You know, shooting an hour before sunset, an hour after sunrise. And that's obviously an amazing time to shoot. Often, uh, that's the right time as well. Ton of creative opportunities open up, but it can be easy to kind of think that that is the only time that you should be shooting. And that, in my opinion, couldn't be further from the truth. What's really important is to make sure that you're using the light that suits your subject the best and also the mood you're trying to create. So this image here, this is one from my American Southwest work. And this is a really good example of a lot of the light I shot in. Obviously this is like midday, super harsh, super bright. And what's interesting is for a large portion of my career, I did traditional landscape work. And I actually dug into the archives and busted out a few images for this, which is uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting to reflect on. So I'm gonna show you some of those. But uh, the reason I wanna do that is just because the light that I would work with for these images in this point in my career was always golden hour or twilight. So, you know, blue hour, really just trying to create like this dramatic feel, dramatic mood and these dynamic images, just to really kind of share these like unique moments that I had in the wilderness. So this one, you know, blue hour, super dramatic with this contrasting fire here, really soft, pretty pleasing. You know, stuff like this early morning light where it's like illuminating little areas in the landscape here as well. You know, golden hour as well, quite dramatic. Even things like this where you have these like foggy mornings backlit by the morning sun. Situations again like this, you know, this is sunset right below, right before the sun goes below the horizon. Um, but it was always about like the dramatic light. And honestly, it's what I was after as an artist and it really kind of complemented the subject matter and got across the mood that I wanted to kind of um, showcase in my images. But what's interesting is when I, kind of moved out of that realm and started creating a lot of the work that I am now, especially this American Southwest stuff, I started shooting almost exclusively in the middle of the day. And what I found is that it worked really well. And it's actually what worked best for the, the feel that I was trying to get across with my images. So, you know, a lot of these are shot at like 2, 3 p.m., really harsh, really intense light. And it's stuff that I never would have shot in ever before. I wouldn't even thought about it. Um, same here, you know, probably shot at like noon, sun super high. And what's interesting though, is I did shoot, uh, while I was making this work, some of my subjects in like overcast conditions like this one, or I did shoot a handful of images at twilight, golden hour, ones like this. And I do really like all these images, but they probably make up like 10% if that, of the kind of the final portfolio of what's gonna go into the book. And, and the reason for that is because they just take on such a different feel than these images that were created in this kind of harsher light. And that's really what I started to learn uh, and understand is what I wanted to get across. You know, it's just this like really bright, harsh, muted colors um, uh, for these images. Whereas, you know, shooting at twilight or golden hour brought this like, it's like the light was a little more beautiful and it just didn't feel like a good fit for a lot of these images. Uh, but then, you know, moving on from that, shooting in Canada, back where I was, or now here uh, in England and in the UK, that kind of like harsh midday sun does not work at all because it's a completely different color palette, completely different subject matter. It's a lot of green, not as open, 
So I found myself kind of now experimenting and trying to find what works here. That's been like a lot of overcast light, dramatic skies, or even some at golden hour as well. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of share these examples quickly and talk about this because the point that I'm trying to get across and that's so important is like, there really is no bad light to shoot in and, and that sounds so cliche, uh, but it's almost like there's bad light for certain subjects and you as the photographer need to kind of follow your intuition, give yourself time to experiment, shoot different things and see what works best for kind of the mood you're trying to create uh, and for the subjects that you're photographing. So choose the right light. That's a where I want to start, but it's such an important one. Don't limit yourself just to golden hour because you think that's the only time that's worthwhile shooting outside. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is the direction of the light and the importance of that. Probably not too surprising, but I do wanna talk about one thing in particular. The one thing that I kind of found myself always trending towards as a way to, to work with even like harsh light in the best way possible is this idea of shooting into the shadows. And for portrait photography, this is often referred to as like short side lighting, where you're lighting basically the face or the portion of the face that the camera sees the least of. That way the camera is kind of shooting into the shadows. So for a lot of my work, that is the trend that kind of comes into play. And I find it's a great way to help kind of bring some depth into your images and also just kind of like tame harsh light and not have really distracting shadows and stuff like that. Uh, so this first image here, you'll see, obviously this is like kind of side slash backlit, but shooting into the shadows here. So we have this portion of the car here that's falling in the shadows. Obviously this little portion of uh, this trailer here, same thing you know, this edge of the car. So this is only like side lit, but it's still giving us some shape now. You know, if we were shooting from over here, obviously the light would be super flat. It would take on a very different look. And this is all just about like giving yourself time when you get to locations to analyze the light that's there and figure out uh, A, if it's going to work for kind of the composition that you want, but also where to place yourself to make the most uh, of it. This is another example. This is like midday, the light's pretty harsh, but you'll see uh, where I'm positioned. Now we have this side of the building that's falling into shadows. Even these little details, you know, these shadows that are being cast by this like cool little flower pot here. And then what I love is this sign here is in the shadows, but we have this, you know, since it's uh, kind of like side slash backlit, we still have the sun that's kind of just edging this one corner here and it, really gives some shape uh, to this sign now. Excuse my crazy pointer mess. <laughs> but again, this would have been a very different look if I was shooting this way. It would have been super flat uh, and just not looked nice at all. So even when the light is harsh, like these scenes, you know, if you kind of analyze and study the scene and position yourself in the right place, uh, you can work with it in a way that's still very pleasing and that still gives your uh, subject matter a little bit of shape and dimension. Uh, this one as well, so this is obviously like a uh, more of a detail shot, but this is a really good example where, you know, the majority of this scene, try and get this the best I can, uh, is falling into the shadow. So all of this foreground area here and a large portion of the car. And then we just have this one back section here of the trunk and a little bit of these taillights that are being uh, lit by the sun. They just have this definition to them. So this scene is really kind of backlit, uh, but by shooting kind of into the shadows here, again, we get some really nice shape to these. These taillights take on almost like a 3D look to them. Even ones like this, you know, this is early morning light, but again, shooting into the shadows, even these details were like, uh, because, because of where I was positioned now, these uh, like posts for this, sign have this shape to them because they're just being edged here by that side light that really helped give them a little bit of like a 3D look. And then one more example. So this is, uh, I wanted to show this one just because the same applies even when the light is really soft. So this is obviously shot at twilight, but even if you're out and it's like a cloudy day, there's going to be one area where the light's going to be even just a little more intense. You know, even if the sun's behind really thick clouds and you need to kind of stop analyze your scene and see where that is. Uh, obviously with this one in twilight, the sun was below the horizon, but it was coming from this direction. And because of that, 
Now we have this really nice kind of gradient here because this building's being side lit and it has this nice kind of look to it. Whereas if I was shooting say from over here, this would be very flat. You can even see that in the car here, you know, the whole front here is in the shadows, same with this. And then we have this side portion of it that's a little bit brighter because of that soft light that's coming from the side of this frame. So really important to pay attention to the direction. I know this sounds so simple, but I found even myself when I started shooting outside a lot, but even other photographers I know who um, are experienced, but maybe shoot mostly indoors. It's like you get outside and just cause you don't have lights and all that, uh, it's almost like you stop paying attention to where the intensity and direction of the, the light source is coming from. So take some time, even five minutes, check things out, figure out where the best place for you to be is. Okay, so before we jump into the next point, I uh, just wanna take a second to talk about uh, the sponsor of this video today, which is Squarespace, and just a few reasons why they've been such a valuable tool for me as a creative over the years. So if there's one thing I'm definitely not good at, it's website design. In the past, it's consumed so much of my time, and that's why now having a tool like Squarespace is so valuable uh, to me, as it allows me to just easily make these professional looking websites, you know, something as simple as a portfolio site, uh, or even a little more complex, like the website I made for my podcast that has different episode pages, even allows me to have an online store as well. So check out squarespace.com, uh, give it a shot, sign up for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, you can use the code Kyle McDougall to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Anyways, let's jump back in to the next point. So number three, and this is one of my favorites, this is all about visualization and looking for high contrast details in your scene. So this image here, this was shot at kind of sunset, the lights getting lower, you know, really kind of getting intense just from the side here on the edges of this building. But when I was there, you know, I loved this car as a subject and it was getting hit with this light. And since the car was silver and quite reflective, uh, it's pretty intense where the light's hitting that. Uh, you know, in contrast, this car in front of it, which is a darker color, isn't reflecting the light as much. It's not as intense. Uh, and this building isn't as reflective either. And this can just be like subtleties that you notice. You know, this car was brighter than a large portion of the scene, but it wasn't drastically different, but it was enough that I noticed it and I knew later in post, I could kind of exaggerate that a little bit by pulling my exposure down playing with contrast a little bit and just like accentuating what was already there. But it's important to kind of visualize while you're there what that could look like afterwards when you're processing. Otherwise you might miss these opportunities because it, it'll never look this dramatic to your eye while you're there. You need to kind of stop and think about the potential that it has. I wanna show this next one because this is a really good example of this. So this was shot on the Olympus XA. This would have been uh, midday, probably like 2 p.m. Definitely not a color film scenario. It would have looked really bad, but by shooting with black and white and really kind of visualizing this while I was there, I knew this scene had some potential. So really what interested me was this was backlit and there were these really bright uh, kind of areas that were being like almost rimlet by the sun. You know, it's a little bit of sun on the hood on this kind of like barbecue looking thing. Obviously the sky is quite bright up here. And then just this foreground area as well. But the thing is, is, you know, if you didn't think about this while you were in the field, you could miss it because for example, um, since I was using an Olympus XA, it has a built-in meter, which will kind of give me an average exposure. Uh, when I developed this and then I uh, converted it, it probably would have looked something like this out of the, straight out of the scanning software, just because again, it's trying to give me this like balanced average middle gray look over the scene. And obviously this doesn't look good, but you know, afterwards in the conversion software and also in Lightroom, this is just a saved JPEG. So it doesn't have any of my edits on it. So it's like finished, but I would have pulled the exposure down, pulled the shadows down a bit and really just kind of uh, accentuated these details that kind of caught my attention while I was there and all of a sudden this image takes on a lot more of kind of a dramatic look and it works. Whereas it wouldn't have if I just did like an average middle gray uh, exposure of the scene. This is a similar example. This isn't as dramatic, um, but when I was here, you know, it was kind of a cloudy day. The sun would peek in and out and there was this telephone booth, which is obviously like a mirror, you know, it has this massive uh, 
silver reflected side. So every time the sun would kind of poke out a little bit, this would all of a sudden, this one little portion of it would become the brightest detail in the scene, you know, maybe a little bit of the sky here. But in contrast, obviously these uh, bushes, these dark bushes aren't gonna reflect as much of that light uh, as this silver phone box was going to. So I knew, you know, going with kind of black and white for this image that I was going to be able to kind of exaggerate this a little bit. Again, not, you know, going crazy, but just enough uh, to help give this image some depth uh, by making this kind of the brightest portion of the scene. This is one more example, and this is another one shot on the Olympus. And again, it probably would have come out of the, the uh, conversion software looking something like this, where it's trying to give you this like exposed middle gray look uh, that's averaged over this like foreground area. But I knew while I was there that what I loved about this scene, this was obviously shot near the end of the day, the sky is nice and bright, you have the light kind of coming from this way, and it's just really kind of accenting some of the edges of this car because it's quite reflective, whereas a large portion of this scene that's just like brick and, uh, and pavement is falling into darkness a little bit more. So I was able, you know, visualizing uh, while I was there on location, later when I was editing, I was able to kind of pull the exposure down, play with the contrast and really kind of bring that to life, which is what I saw uh, while I was there. So anyways, super important, play around with this if it's not something you do. When you go to locations, we're just so used to being outside, being in these places that things just become normal to us. So you have to take the time to stop, spend like five minutes and just look in depth in a way that you normally wouldn't when you're staring at a scene like this. You know, you might walk by something like this and be like, oh, it's a cool car, the light's super nice. But if you didn't stop and take a couple minutes to look at specific little details, you're gonna miss out on opportunities like this. So next up is using light and shadows to create shapes in your image. So if you watch my composition video, this is something I kind of touched on a little bit. Wanted to expand uh, on it for this video as well and just go a little more in depth. Um, but just like I mentioned in that last point, you know, about how scenes become normal to us, the same thing can happen with not only like these high contrast details, but also just like shadows. Shadows are a big one because, you know, they're everywhere. We're used to them and they almost can just like blend into the landscape. Uh, but as a photographer, again, if you take that time to really kind of pay attention and study a scene, you'll notice that they start to become their own elements. So, you know, this image, what I love is this shadow that's created of these bombs, these fake bombs at this, uh, this is the Ordnance Museum in, uh, in Nevada, quite an interesting place. But since this is being side, side lit, we have these nice shadows. And for me, they make up such a big part of the image. But if I didn't take that time to really notice them and, and work them into the scene, I could have maybe just like composed my image like this, where all of a sudden, a little bit of this is being cut off. Because again, it just blended into the scene because I, I wasn't being kind of aware enough. But, you know, by recognizing that it's there as an element, I'm able to kind of give it a nice kind of chunk of breathing room in my composition, and all of a sudden, it becomes another subject almost. Same thing with this one, you know, this was shot midday, but we have this shadow that's created, actually this was probably later in the day, just seeing how the shadow is. This was from the buildings across the street, but this is now adding this different shape that wouldn't have been there uh, without the shadow, obviously the road just would have been this big bright portion, but I like how it now almost like mimics and balances the weight of the sky. You know, just having this darker object here. And also it's just kind of creeping in and just hitting uh, these, starting to hit these vehicles. This is another angle of it. Again, this image would be very different without it. This one would still probably work without it because um, the, I guess like the weight of the foreground is quite similar to the weight of the sky in terms of balancing it out. But I just like, you know, you have this difference in tone now where the shadow is really creating this different shape. Uh, and I like how it's just about hitting these vehicles, but not. So it's giving them like this little slice of light to kind of live in. 
I showed this one in the composition video as well, but this is more so talking about how light can create shapes, you know, coming through windows, coming through doors. This scene obviously would be quite different without these little slashes of light from the window and the door. Same with this one, this would be very flat, but now we have these nice kind of shapes coming from the windows and they almost like form this triangle, add some nice interest to the scene. Last one here, I think I may have showed this one as well, uh, but just, you know, you have this overhang here that's now creating this shadow that I intentionally kind of placed here in this like bottom eighth of the image. So I wanted to kind of go over this again as we're talking about natural light because shadows especially will blend into the landscape because we're so used to them being there. So if this isn't something that you've really studied before while you're out, I'd say next time you go out, really pay attention to where they're falling, what they're creating, and how you can use them as elements in your composition. I think you'll be quite surprised. Okay, so last up, this plays off the previous one a little bit, but this is just using light and shadows to create depth in your image. So obviously the first point we talked about the direction of the light creating depth and dimension, but this is something I love doing uh, a little different than what we talked about with that one. This is more so just looking for like contrasting uh, lighting areas in a scene. So for example, uh, this one here, this is early morning. A large portion of this street is obviously being lit by the early morning light. So this kind of more intense uh, side light that's very bright. But then we have this portion of the scene that hasn't been hit by that light yet and it's still in this nice kind of soft shadowed light. So two very different lighting qualities but by you know, choosing to include this portion of the scene, uh, it helps create some depth and kind of pull you in because you have this contrast. You know, I did create uh, an image, I think that was just of this portion, which still looked nice, uh, but in the end I chose to kind of make this one uh, what I consider the keeper just because it does have this nice uh, kind of depth to it now, created by including this soft light as well. Uh, same with this one. So this is an image that would take on a very different look if, say, this portion wasn't being hit by this uh, direct sunlight. You know, if this was just like shot on an overcast day and everything was a soft light, uh, this area here would really just almost like blend in to the rest of the scene. Whereas now, you know, you have this area that's all in this soft light with this one section kind of in the middle in this direct light and it kind of pulls you uh, through this scene and uh, really kind of helps add some di like dimension to something that otherwise would have been a little more dull. So somewhat similar here, this is one of the scenarios that I love working with. So twilight, just waiting for these like last hints of light. So obviously in this image we have a super bright sky, which is a nice contrast, but then we have this whole, oh my God, this is <laughs> awful. <laughs> All right, let me reset that. Okay, so we have this whole section of the foreground here that's mostly in this like shadowed, falling in the shadows in the soft light. But I love just like sitting in these areas with the composition set up like this and watching as like the light just starts to fade and just highlight these little edges and these little areas. But we still have these two very different scenarios where we have a foreground, that's mostly in soft light, but we still have this bright sky back here. So two very different lighting scenarios uh, works very well. So in this one, pretty much all the foreground, you know, these houses, these cars, everything uh, is falling into shadows because the sun is basically below the horizon. So nothing's being hit by direct light anymore. It's very dark, but the sky, you know, at this moment, just as twilight starts to begin before this gets too soft, this portion of the sky is still very bright. So I have this nice contrast. This is a reverse of that same shot. So again, love how this works, you know, with this portion of the sky being nice and bright, but we have this very kind of soft, less intense light that's falling on the foreground. This is actually, this is another good example, just looking for those high contrast edges. So for me in this one, you know, visualizing how this could look, I knew that this kind of uh, light uh, the soft light that was reflecting off this uh, car here was gonna make for a nice little detail in this image as well. And then last one, so this was shot uh, in Wales. And I wanted to show this because this 
uh, was just shot on an overcast day, but uh, sometimes when you have these skies that are really kind of moody, they have these nice portions of like dark cloud and then this bright light here, whatever this is that I'm doing. <laughs> uh, so this foreground, again, falling in shadows, a lot darker, and then you have this intense portion of the sky here. So two very different lighting scenarios. And this is similar to that approach, looking for those high contrast uh, details in your scene. The same can kind of apply for this. Uh, just like when I was here looking at this, I would have probably just thought, okay, this portion of the sky is nice and bright. And it, that's going to allow me, when I'm kind of editing, post-processing after, to play that up a little bit and make a lot of the portions of my scene quite a bit darker uh, and just help give the image a little bit uh, of a different look, help it be a little bit more dynamic. So anyways, looking for different lighting scenarios in a scene, that's the one I want to finish with. Super helpful. That can be foreground and shadows, background and intense light, brighter skies, duller foregrounds. All of those options are going to uh, give you different looks and feels. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that. Obviously a little bit of a longer video, but I really just wanted to have a discussion, share some of these approaches that I take. Like I said, these definitely aren't rules. It's more so just food for thought and to talk about what works for me. And I think the most important thing is just to understand that you really need to kind of give yourself time when you go out. So that doesn't mean spending five hours, you know, on an image, but even just, taking an extra five minutes to decide how you can work best with the light that's there, and maybe even deciding if you need to come back at a different point when it's more suiting for your subject and for the mood that you're trying to create. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as always, comment below, love the feedback, love the discussions. Just wanna say thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you next week.